Okay, it's showing 6.30 for me. Is everybody seeing the, something similar? Yes. With that in mind, I will uh, convene the fund meeting of May 21st. The panel is about the board of directors. Holly, would you like to take the role? President Swan. Here. Director Moran. Present. Director Fulz. Here. Director Henry. Here. Director Ferris. Here. Thank you, Holly. General uh, Rick, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Uh, staff has none, and I, I believe district council has none as well. That's right, none for me. Terrific. We'll now proceed to the oral communications. Anybody in the attendee column or whoever you are, your single person, have anything that you'd like to bring up um, that's not on the agenda? Feel free to do so. Okay, I don't see any uh, comments from anybody. So move on to unfinished business, Rick. Like yes, uh, we have the final draft uh, budget for fiscal year 2020-2021 review, and we have the finance manager that will present uh, this report. Stephanie? Stephanie, are you, I see you're on, but we can't hear you. Hello, Stephanie. She's still showing is muted. Stephanie, are you muted? Can we unmute Stephanie? <clears throat> I can't see if she's muted or not down here. She's still muted. Okay, you're still muted, Steph. Give her another couple seconds. She just texted me and said she's on her cell phone and that it looks like they're trying to unmute on the her iPad where she's connected to the Zoom. Is there another caller that maybe she's under? We don't have another participant or caller that I mm -hmm. can see. No, there's nothing else other than her right. one entry. And she's not in the attendee list either. So. Hmm. No. Right. She's going to have to recall in. Maybe she called the wrong number. Well, we have. Uh, I can start on the start on the uh, on the memo. Uh, the budget. Uh, this is the approved the resolution number twenty one nineteen twenty. Adopt the fiscal year budget for twenty 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 one in its present form. Uh, the budget is a financial tool to help plan and guide the district's revenue and expenses. It is uh, slightly different than the audited uh, financials, mainly in that uh, the budget looks more um, to cash expenses and excludes depreciation and other non-cash events. The budget has been reviewed multiple times at committee level and at board meetings. From these discussions, the changes have been incorporated, incorporated into this final draft budget. Um, part of the budget review process is review the current projected and upcoming budget year projected reserve fund balances. Uh, the budget is approved. The related uh, appendixes will be updated for, re for the reserve fund policy. Um, you have uh, the budget, the draft budget in your packet. And it looks like Stephanie's coming up now, which would be great.
Well, she's not showing muted anymore. No, she's not showing muted. I see her twice. Well, that's, I think she's calling in on the second one. Yeah, she's on the computer with one and the phone and the other. Um, is it telephone? Both, both of which are offline still. Hmm. And we'll continue more on the budget. The overview of the district budget request uh, is 21. 0.8 million highlights include 11.8 million in capital projects, which is a significant increase over prior years. Operating expense increased 447,000 from the prior uh, budget, mainly due to employee related expenses and intermittent expenses such as election, election fees, urban water management plan, et cetera. Operating revenues increased uh, as expected with the rate increase. Uh, rate increases, reserves are expected to increase by 61,000, which will help fund reserves and could be used to uh, pay off certain unfunded liabilities. Overall, these are positive signals for the district. Um, you have in your packet a, a high level view of the categories, um, and then you have the, uh, the full budget. It's gonna be tough to get questions answered without Stephanie here. Uh, Rick, do we want to take one of the other items? Uh, we could come back. Service line and come back when Stephanie's online. We, why don't we? It's like a great idea. Why don't we go to uh, the long service line agreement for APN 089431-21, and we have the engineering manager to present this item, hopefully. Aaron. <laughs> Is Darren uh, unmuted? I'm here now. I'm okay. here now. Hold on a second. Now I've got to get a copy of my staff report. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is long service line agreement for APN 0894321. Uh, earlier this year, Brenda and Tom Jamison applied for water service to APN 089-43121, generally located at 380 Shadow Mountain Road in Boulder Creek. Staff, staff's review indicate that the district has no water distribution facilities at the location and recommends that water service be provided by a long service line agreement. In the past, the district has authorized long service line agreements when future water line extensions were not likely to be constructed. Uh, the applicant is required to provide the district with proof right away. The applicant is required to participate in any future water line, water main line extensions should such main line provide service to the subject parcel. It is recommended that the board approve the task resolution, which authorizes a long service line agreement for Brenda and Tom Jameson. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions regarding the long service line agreement. Uh, do we have any, any questions from the board? Lou? Yes, I have a question, Darren. Uh, I did not see anywhere in the proposal as to who pays for that long extension service line. Is that on the district? Is that on the um, service provider? Are they? Uh, the so that would be on the. Yeah, that would be that would be a customer provided item. So the district would would set the meter. Everything beyond the meter would be provided by the customer, and they've been made aware of that. I think. Thank you, Bob. That, 
As I saw the last thing that you sent out, Holly, that was a little over $11,000. Is that that's correct. That's correct. Okay. So I have a, uh, and thank you for that. I had that same question that uh, Lou did until I saw Holly's report. Thank you. Um, what kind of piping is it? And is it underground? And how far underground if it is underground? So standard water, uh, water lines uh, back of the meter. I think the meter is probably a one inch meter. So the water lines can vary anywhere from three quarter inch to two inch, depending on how far they're going and how uh, much uh, friction they're trying to eliminate. The larger diameter pipe would have less water line friction than a smaller diameter pipe. Um, but usually they're installed two to three feet underground. Okay. And do they hire a private contractor to do that or, or is, how is that done? Yeah, so they, they could do it themselves. They could do it with a private contractor. They could do it by any means or method that they okay. choose. It's their responsibility. It's their responsibility, exactly. Right. right. And uh, so, Rick, this is a new customer, right? That is what we put in the category a new customer. Right. We've got, we've been, this is a meter bank that we've been working on probably for over 20 years up in Shadow Mountain. Uh, the meter bank was installed for several parcels that partitioned the district some time ago. Uh, we increased uh, uh, storage size and ran a main line down and installed a meter bank. And now we're getting down to the last couple um, that the original uh, service requests are finally coming and paying the money to move ahead. Uh, so this is a completely new. This is an existing home that has a failed water source up off of Bear Creek Road up on Shadow Mountain above Ralston Ridge. Okay, great. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Rick. Up, Bob Fultz, you have a question. You have your hand up. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I have a few questions, and and Darren, they they may not all be directed at you. Um, just wanted to make sure that the fact that this wasn't in the uh, board packet isn't going to create any issues, Brown Act issues, or anything like that. Gina, the uh, the agreement was left out of the agenda item. Um, the resolutions in the agenda item, but the actual agreement was left out. Um, Director Fultz uh, requested it. We sent it out this evening. Okay. Um, I think under the circumstances, you, typically we would bring that hard copy to the board meeting for anybody who wants to see it. But I, I think what we should do here is that um, if anybody, any members of the public in attendance want to see a copy, uh, they could shoot an email to uh, perhaps the district secretary and it could be provided that way. And we can go back and post this with the agenda, if that's okay with you, Gina, tomorrow. Uh, uh, absolutely. And uh, we can post that full agreement with the item tomorrow. And we have it. Okay, great. Um, looking at the agreement itself, there's a few things I didn't um, understand. And, and by the way, uh, we need to get like 50 or 100 more of these, Rick. So I don't know how how that's possible to do, but uh, adding customers is a really good thing for us. Um, under the term, I was a little confused about what the term of this agreement was, just from the point of view of making sure we're protecting the customer. It says here, uh, initial period of five years and then a potential renewal period of three years. And so what happens after eight years? I think that's to implement the agreement. They had to implement it, not once they implement the agreement, it goes on forever. Well, um, I don't have that agreement in front of me, but. I'm not, that, I, I assumed that that was the case, but that's not exactly how it's written. So maybe for the next one, we might wanna okay. clarify that because there are terms in this agreement that potentially would last beyond eight years. And if this agreement terminates after eight years, potentially, or even terminate after they install the service, then those other terms would not be in effect. Right. I think typically it was for, because that I do believe that agreement expired once already um, because it sat out there for so long. Um, okay. I do believe that's what that pertains to. So, so for example, on point number 11, where basically we 
are saying that the applicant cannot take any exception to any kind of assessment district in the future, um, that would then only be while this agreement was in place and after they installed the service, this would no longer be in effect. Is that correct? I disagree. No, I, once the agreement, the way they are in the past, like I said, I don't have it in front of me. Once we execute the agreement, both parties sign, that agreement is in fact forever. Well, but that's not what it says in the term. So that, that. that's not a, that's not what it says in the term. And so I'm I'm reluctant to move forward in this while that's a little unclear because right now it looks like it's terminates potentially at the end of five years unless you or the district manager at that time extends it, in which case it's just another three years and after that it's gone. Yeah. That I, like I said, again, I, I don't have it in front of me. It's not on my agenda either. Okay. Um, look at so, it. so can I ask a, a question though about uh, 11? Um, what is the purpose of asking the applicants to not oppose protest or take exception to the formation of any assessment district or other methodology, et cetera? Um, I, don't, I don't understand that. With, with the long service land agreement is what that customer is agreeing to. If where we've done it in the past, you have one or two homeowners extending the main line, then all of a sudden we've get four or five, I mean, extend, uh, getting a long service line agreement. Then we get four or five customers uh, wanting a uh, long service line agreement. We wind up extending the main the customers, including the customers with the agreements, have to pay their cost share of that mainline extension. So that is in... Highly doubtful that where these folks live that we'd ever extend the mainline due to the fact that we don't have pressure to get up in those higher reach elevations. But some like North Boulder Creek and others that we've had, we have extended and customers had to pay their fair share to the uh, extend the main. And then the meter was no longer a long service line. It was moved up in front of their home as they had front footage to main lines. Yeah, I, I, I think I understand. I guess I'm a little troubled by the breadth of this. Um, you know, back 25, 30 years ago, when people were getting building permits, the county was basically saying that you had to pro provide them with a permanent easement across all of their property as a condition of getting the, um, the building permit. And, I, you know, that was a very broad thing. And I get the part about wanting to make sure that they participate in, the, in when it's created but the breadth of not taking any exception, that is not providing any input, even if it may be valid input, into the formation of an assessment district or be in any way prohibited from commenting on that seems really broad and would shut them out of what I think would be a normal democratic process of uh, participation. Um, so, um, I get that they've already signed this agreement, and so they're already okay with it, but I think we need to take a look at how broad we're sort of prohibiting people and participating in anything that may affect them going forward. I, I, it, that just doesn't feel quite right from a, uh, uh, from a customer uh, service point of view. We, we can, uh, it doesn't sound like this agreement's gonna go forward tonight, so we can discuss with district council. Well, it could. I thought, I think Gina said that it could, in fact, go forward, right? I didn't know if you were going to feel comfortable moving in ahead, if the board would feel comfortable moving in ahead with these Yeah, questions. I mean, in general, I just got a couple other uh, questions okay. here. Um, since this is the first one I've participated in, we're getting, you're getting all of the, the things. Uh, what's the cross-connection device? Is that just a meter? No, that's a backflow device, a state-required cross-connection device, because the elevation that this home is going to they're going to have to repressurize district water. Right. And on long service land agreements, we require, because it's out of the control of the district, the district for such a, a vast uh, length of that service line, and they're gonna have fire storage, et cetera, we require and the state requires a cross connection device at the meter so no water can flow from the customer back into the potable water system and potentially contaminate 
the district water supply. Yeah, as soon as you said backflow instead of cross connect, I got it. Okay. <laughs> so I just didn't understand that was what was meant was the backflow. Um, and then is there any benefit to them uh, being upsold to a one inch meter uh, instead of just a three quarter inch? Um, obviously, you know, there's benefit to us, but um, I'm wondering, is there any benefit to them? Well, it's, it's the meter is sized for their fixture count and it would be pretty much double the connection fee. And so we size uh, the meter is what's most important to the customer is that their service line be sized properly for the length and the friction loss over that length. Well, I, I, I hope they don't put a three quarter or one inch that in, that's gonna, that's a lot of friction. But um, it, would, it would increase costs to the customer, not only their connection fee, but their monthly service charge. And we're, we size the meter, so we would be selling them a meter larger than they really needed. Okay, um, all right. So and there's no, there, there's no sprinkler situation here then that we have to worry about or anything? We can't provide fire flow in that zone. Okay. Um, Okay, no, I'm, I'm, look, hey, Rick, uh, getting customers on the district is, uh, you know, should be job number one. So uh, let's, if we can vote on it tonight with Gina's approval, let's do so. Yeah. Any other uh, questions by any other directors? Or we'll go to the general public. Okay, to the, uh, to the six public members, any questions? And I see, uh, E.J. Armstrong has a question, feel free. Unmute, Mr. I'm unmuted, can you hear me? Hello? Armstrong, remember you are? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Great, uh, yes, listening to this discussion, very informative, basic engineering, basic civil engineering, size of pipes, size of runs, friction, all of these things, check valves and everything else makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. The point being that giving the people at the very end of the run uh, a voice in the system, I think is really important and needs to be emphasized. And I, I appreciate that being stressed by Director Fultz. I, I really do. And having faced a number of these issues myself, including having our valves blown out by high pressure and destroying the interior, <coughs> excuse me, the interior of our home on two separate occasions. I would like to say that, <clears throat> excuse me, that having a voice in this transaction is incredibly important because if you make an insurance claim against flooding, they will terminate your insurance. And then getting insurance again is extremely difficult. And very expensive. And thank you very much for this. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, questions from anybody uh, attend, any of the attendees? I don't see any, come back to the board. Okay, uh, does anybody on the board wanna make a motion at this time? I'll make a motion that we extend this service line Lewis. Uh, um, I think we um, we need the formal wording here, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I don't know where it is. There's a resolution in the packet, so the motion okay. could be to approve uh, resolution number 2219-20. 2022 2219-20. 2020 19- Let's approve that. Let's approve resolution number 22. Yeah. 19-20. Right. And uh, I'll second that for you, Lois. Thank you very much, Steve. Holly, can you uh, can you uh, take the poll, the vote? Yes. Uh, President Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. I beg your pardon? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. 
Motion passes. Wonderful. I don't see uh, Stephanie on. Rick. I do believe Stephanie's here it's again. I don't her by text. Stephanie, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Then, uh, Chair Swan, if, you, if, if permissible, we'll go back to item uh, 5A, uh, the uh, budget. Yep, and uh, our finance manager will give that report now that she's with us. Terrific. Stephanie? Okay, so as as Rick started to introduce kind of the, the memo, um, we have the full budget package, which not much has changed at all from when we reviewed it last. Um, some of the key things in the overall packet is it'll have each of the different project descriptions. It has a lot of the different reports and charts by department um, to help give a little bit more depth to, to some of the items. Um, overall, it is a $21.8 million um, balance budget with a uh, majority of it, 11.8 million coming in from capital projects. Um, operating expenses less the overhead absorption is about 8.1. And then some of the remaining is gonna be the debt payments and uh, interest payments on, on some of our, our loans. Um, the majority of the funding does come from our operating revenue of 11.4 million. And the remaining is mainly coming from the debt sources, the 14.5 million, uh, which is funding about 8.9 of the related capital project. And so I can answer any questions um, people have, but in general, things are looking good. At the end of fiscal year 2021, we're projected to have just over $4 million sitting in reserve. That is um, covering our restricted reserves for some of our debt covenants. It is covering um, the third, which is the target amount for the compensated absences. It's fully funding the targeted operating reserve fund, and the capital reserve fund should be just shy of $500,000. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, we have a question here from Director Fultz. Bob? Yeah, just a few questions, um, Stephanie. On the capital projects page, um, uh, how much of the 14.5 million uh, COP has been spent so far, excluding what's on the budget page? Spent year to date, let me pull up that. It hasn't been... Just approximate. It doesn't, doesn't have to be exact. Second, I'm just pulling up my reconciliation. We have spent roughly a little over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, not much, de minimis at this point. So if mm -hmm. if and I want to make sure I get these numbers correct, if I add up all the numbers for this year and next year for projects that are related to the COP, I think it comes out to about thirteen million, more or less. And so uh, if I add in the hundred thousand, maybe thirteen point two. So we're looking at still having potentially almost a million dollars, assuming all these numbers came in this way, we'd have almost a million dollars left out of the 14.5 million. Um, are there projects that are going to be tapping into the COP that are not on this, um, that are not on this list? Because having an extra million dollars would be good. Let me see. I'm just going through the listing and what we have listed for the projects for the 14 to see if there's 
Well, they the, the that are not on here. Yeah, the, they look like they were all on here. I'm just wondering if they, you know, something went into the next year after, you know, 2022, 2023, or is everything going to be done by the end of 2022? I believe all of these projects are slated to be done by the end of fiscal year 2022. So you're taking the budget request for this year, the future year projections, yeah. and getting all of those yeah, yeah, I think I think it came to thirteen point one four five million with your hundred K thirteen point two five, let's call it. So that's you know a million two five that um now again we never know what construction costs are gonna be, so I don't want to count our chickens before they hatch, but um you know, if we do get some relief on increases in construction costs due to, you know, the current situation, maybe we'll have a little bit of extra money we can apply to uh, to other things. Okay, um, second question. on when, you, when we talk about reserves on that same page, uh, just to make sure I'm, I got this correct, we're really talking about a combination of the margin uh, that we're getting this year plus what we have in reserves um, already is that that's is that correct? Correct. Okay. So when I go to the summary page, which by the way, thank you for putting together the summary page. Really helpful in being able to see what's happening. Um, I see that our capital reserve is decreasing from six seventy one to four eighty nine, and the last capital reserve number I had before this, and there may have been one in between, but the only one I could find from last July showed that we were targeted for about a million dollars in the capital reserve. And I'm, I'm wondering, um, I, I, I'm having a half million dollar capital reserve is just not enough. Um, we're really only increasing our reserves at this point in time by about 50,000 more or less dollars. Uh, this is this is not enough, and I was really surprised to see that it was really down that low compared to what I thought we were at based on last year's uh, numbers. Being last year's budget? No, this was uh, July 2nd. It was after the budget was approved, and it was, of course, an estimate, but, I mean, I don't see that the numbers came in so much poorer that we would have taken the capital reserve budget down by uh, almost 400,000 or 330 some thousand dollars. I guess I'd have to go back and see what you're referring to. Cause when we put together the fiscal year 1920 budget, we were projecting nothing being in capital reserve. Well, I'm, I'm just looking at the uh, budget committee from July 2nd, uh, 2019, and we had in it uh, operating 2.931, which matches what's, uh, what's in your document, a capital of 1.036 uh, and uh, 171 compensated absences, that matches the restricted reserve, all the other rest of them match, it's just the capital reserve for some reason is Quite a bit different. Anyway, the, the point that, I, that I'm concerned about is that what we're doing here is we're actually, it looks like this year, because our margin isn't enough to cover all the things that are in the capital budget, we're actually dipping into our capital reserve uh, to fund some of those. And I, I completely understand that tank coatings, for example, are, you know, from my point of view, one of the top priorities. Um, but we all need to recognize that that's what we're doing. And so if we did the same thing next year, we would be look because operating expenses are going to go up, presumably by the same amount of our rate increase, if not more. Um, and we take the capital reserve down another 200 K, you know, we're down basically at a quarter million. And this is the, um, this is the concern I have about doing year to year budgeting. We don't really get a good look at what the trends are going to be relative to what they need to be because our target for capital improvements is 3.75 million. And that's based on a $150 million inventory, which I think we all kind of have the notion is a little bit low. So we're, we're headed in the wrong direction on that particular 
uh, item, and I, I'm concerned, particularly given where we live. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Any other uh, directors with a question or comment for Stephanie? Seeing none. I, I, I got a, a, a few. You're supposed to raise your hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, physically or on the right ahead, on Mr. Party. Director Moran. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Um, so the first question is, Stephanie, do we have any idea of how this uh, economic effect of the coronavirus and uh, unemployment and uh, layoffs and all that kind of, you know, collateral damage that's happening here. Do we have an idea if that's affecting the water district's uh, outlook on revenues? So the district, when we stopped the past due process, we stopped sending out the reminders. Um, those are things that really trigger people to pay some of their bills. Um, it's not, you know, the amount of accounts that we have delinquent right now, it's not uncommon. It's a little bit higher than what we would normally see before we would send out the notification. Um, so it's a little bit too early to tell from that regard. Okay. All right. Um, so then I have a couple other questions. Uh, Rick or anybody can answer these. Um, I saw that maintenance has gone down 15% from 185K or to 185K from 218. Uh, how did that happen? You're not muted, Rick. There, I, um, there we go. Yeah. I'm on mute now. Um, those are actual numbers that the director of operations put together based on on his schedule um, and it's basically fluctuates with what they're doing and the time of year, what they're doing with, with such things as, as the, the tank maintenance, inspection maintenance and those type of things. You know, we're gonna be doing a big uh, 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 private contractor uh, main, uh, main leak detection program. That's gonna take us about a month and a half this year which takes away from other types of maintenance items. So it's all basically what has been scheduled uh, and uh, um, go from there. And if James wants to add to that, he's more than welcome to uh, what else that he's done on that. He might've stepped away for a minute. Okay. So uh, let me ask a couple other questions then. Um, what are the mobile service lease fees? We make some money on that. What are those? Mobile service lease fees. Well, that's probably the uh, the cellular towers, the mobile services, the mobile oh, okay. cellular that we have a sublease um, with Verizon up at uh, the probation tank. You saw that big tower when you were up yeah, there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and rental income, who do we rent to? And um, that's the Johnson Building, we have the electric supply and the uh, the yoga class. Yep. Uh, that are both having issues uh, right now that we were working with adjusting their rent for a couple months due to COVID-19. Right. So the one pretty much closed 100% and the other, uh, the electric supply uh, cut way back. Um, uh, and James, to step back, uh, you if you want to ask that question, you might get a better answer, Rick. Again, he's back. He stepped out for a second. Uh, no, your answer is fine. That's, that's fine. Okay. Um, and let me go down to another question I have is, didn't the district, so I saw something about the uh, solar lease. Didn't we try and buy out the lease a few years ago? Not to my knowledge. Stephanie, do you have any information on that? On the solar lease? Uh, that, is the that is the loan for the solar. Okay. So we will own it. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to buy that. Or is that true? Correct. Okay, great. Um, let me see. Oh, here's a question. Uh, Stephanie, how much is budgeted for the board of directors? 
That's in there. And has it gone up or down? That's my other question about it. It went, well, I mean, year over year now, I mean, we've been doing the two meetings per year. Right. Um, so that, that's remained relatively flat. Um, we aren't, you know, we're not doing, you know, a couple of years ago, we were doing the traveling meetings to where we were needing to rent places. Um, board meetings show up in the admin department. Okay. Um, and so that's going to, you know, that's going to be the stipend that each board member gets will show up in the salaries and benefits. But then any of the meeting expenses like for CCTV, that type of stuff will show up in the um, professional services expense line. But for the most part, I feel like they're pretty much flat year over year. Okay. Um, I know in the past uh, year or so, there's been talk of reducing the board stipend. Um, if we need to uh, revisit that, I'm in favor of doing that, uh, just an aside. And maybe for somebody else here, um, so uh, less than 30 inches of rain this year, uh, conservation, uh, people going to be using less water. Does, how, are, is there projections that you're involved in about uh, water use going down? That's maybe for Carly. Or um, just in general, you know, we've been the, the two prior years, we were budgeting at 660,000 units per year. Um, given this last summer, the trend did dip down. We did budget for 650,000. Our customers do an excellent job in conserving. You know, we are below the state, you know, we're doing, we're beating what the state minimum requirement is. Um, you know, it becomes a question of how much more could people really reduce. I yeah. don't think we're going to be experiencing any extreme drops, but I mean, like you said, is it was not a great rainfall year, so it does leave a little bit of an unknown. Okay, Rick, just for just for FYI, I think our community is somewhere around 40 to 42 gallons uh, per indoor use per day per person. We are yeah. so below whatever the state is. There, there's we, conservation is I don't know how much farther you go. Right. Okay. Uh, then one last question I had, and this might be for Carly as well, but um, the uh, grant writing. So the primary person is uh, for grant writing as I read this is the environmental planner. Um, and is there a way for more personnel that could help in this effort to get more funding? That's a uh, general question I asked. Carly, do you wanna answer that or? Sure, um, so we did a couple months back put out an RFQ uh, for looking for someone to help with grant writing. Unfortunately, we didn't really have anyone apply, but I imagine we'll put that back out again. I'm um, okay. seeking that as, as you know, we're working with Panorama for the fire grants and they're <laughs> full force right now. Um, we're applying to a couple through Cal Fire. So we'll keep that moving. Okay, just wanted to keep that out there. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Rick. Uh, any other questions from any of the directors? Can I make a comment? Sure, Lois. Okay. Don't worry, the, the Vegas trip is still on. We're not going to cut the funding for your trip. <laughs> um, well, for one thing, I used two whole units of water this last billing period, which I don't normally do, because I'm home all the time. I'm not out running around doing whatever it is I normally do. So I'm wondering if more people are using more water because they are home. I guess we'll find out. We yeah. see a small, we've seen a small increase in consumption. We yeah. have seen an increase in consumption yeah. over the last month. So I, I was just thinking, last board meeting, I kind of looked back at, at all my agenda packets and came up with a list of things we had done. 
and I look at this budget, and I think a year from now, I can have a whole big long list again that we're going to get a lot done. We're going to provide staff with the money to do the projects that need to be done. And I'm, I'm really excited about this. And I would actually like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 21-1920. We need to go to the public first, Larry Lois, but we'll, we'll be finished. Well, we'll come right back to you. Yeah, but I can still make the motion. You Sure, you can go back, come back. But Okay. Isn't that right, Gina? Can I make the motion now? And people still can talk about it. Yes, you can make the motion now, but we do need to go out for public comment. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Director Fultz, you have your hand up. Well, let's do public comment first, and then when we come back to the board, I'll, I have a statement I'd like to read. Very good. Anybody else on the board have any other comments? No? Okay, let's go to the public and the attendees. Does anybody uh, in the public have any comments they'd like to make regarding the budget? Uh, April, you are recognized. You'll be unmuted. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to follow up on a comment you guys were already discussing. And I think that a lot of us are working from home. So by necessity, we're using more water, you know, just in the restroom and we're washing our hands more often. And the other thing is that a lot of us are growing a vegetable garden and in the past, in drought years, I greatly reduced my garden. But because of the situation, I want to grow more food this year. So pretty sure my bill is going to be higher. So I don't think you have to worry about a loss of revenue unless people leave the area. Thank you, April. Do we have any other uh, comments from the uh, public? Okay, I don't see any, so we'll come back to the board. Bob, you uh, we left off with you having a blue hand, so would you like to... Yes, I, and I appreciate the, the time here. I, I uh, have a few things that I want to say in preparation for voting on the budget. At our last meeting, Lois gave an impassioned and comprehensive speech outlining all of the improvements that this board has made over the last 18 months. I agree with much of what she said, but as my manager said to me on my first sales job, Thanks for the sale yesterday. What have you done for me today? I think that's an apt summary of what our 8,000 customers are saying to us now as we look at this budget and the long-term implications. We came into office assuring ratepayers we'd work tirelessly for them for the long run. Yes, we hit some milestones, but the work continues and the goal still lies ahead. Our ratepayers, our bosses, expect nothing less from us today than our first moment on the job. It's up to us to keep delivering. Lois well, also said that the number one job of the board are the numbers, and she's right about that as well. The job of the board is to ensure the long-term health of the organization, not to be looking a year down the road, but 10 years and longer down the road. Unfortunately, our board has not yet moved the district to that long-term strategic thinking. We are still doing annual budgets, which represent tactical thinking, and we're doing them without a crystal clear view of how the district will pay for the millions of dollars and promises made by the district, not counting the catch up money we need to spend on infrastructure, not done over the last 20 to 30 years, and not counting the three to four million per year we need to be spending on infrastructure going forward just to stay even and not make the hole any deeper. The 15 million in projects we are undertaking now is just a down payment on that historical lack of investment. Unfortunately, if we accept this budget, we are now moving into the same realm as the previous boards, allowing 100% of the rate increase to be completely consumed by increases in operating expenses. Agreeing with this budget means we continue to delay moving the district to a strategic long-term focus. And of course, with each passing year, those promises made by the district get even more expensive. Those of you at the last meeting who expressed support for this rate increase to address some of these promises are going to be disappointed. Not a single dime 
of the increased revenue due to the rate increase will go towards keeping those promises that the board's made in behalf of our community. The rate increase is being eaten up by increases in operating expenses, which continue to rise at a rate well above inflation. You don't have to be a financial whiz to understand that this is unsustainable over the long term, and it continues the pattern established by previous boards, which got us where we are now in a deep hole. And the first rule of holes is when you're in one, you must stop digging. So how did we get here? Past boards have been happy to approve very interesting budgets, including one in 2016 when operating expenses were increased by a staggering 27% or 1.55 million, while revenue increased by just under a million. Getting that far out of balance set the stage for where we are today, where operating expenses are in a path to increase by an equally staggering 51% between June 2016 and June 2021. That's $3 million, not going to paying down our liabilities. And that was during a time when inflation was about 10%. Therefore, as a community, we are left to ask a simple question. If spending is increasing this fast, what are we getting for it? In other words, what concrete and specific documented measurable benefits is our community getting now that we were not getting in 2016? Are those benefits worth the cost? Was there, is there a different way to achieve those benefits at a lower cost? What regularly measured metrics and reports demonstrate those benefits in a manner that can be understood? Oversight is tough. It's one that we as a board do on behalf of our 8,000 bosses. Oversight means being willing to ask the tough questions and to ensure that the facts and figures are available to back up the answers to those questions. Because in the end, our bosses are asking us, what are you doing for me today? And while we're in this uh, current environment where people are losing businesses and livelihoods and cutting back in all areas, our district cannot continue to conduct business as usual. We are at a disadvantage relative to a lot of our neighbors in terms of the fees that our customers pay. We're not a wealthy community like Scotts Valley or Santa Cruz. We do not have growth plans to supplement capital investment. Our customers are very sensitive to the cost of water and are less able to absorb huge increases, water increases being a regressive tax effectively. We are a community with a large number of people living on low or fixed incomes, and we are not classified as a district eligible for supplemental state funding. Grant funding has fallen off. Hopefully that will change. But in the end, our community is solely responsible for the financial promises and decisions that we as a district and board have made in the past and continue to make today. I think we'd all agree that before the board approves any budget this year and next and beyond, we must ask these basic hard questions and see the full evidence to justify an increase if we mean to do um, our oversight well. Ratepayers expect no less. And while we may reach different conclusions today, I'm expecting we will, in good faith, I'm looking forward to working with the board and with the staff on this critical topic as we move our district forward. Thank you for your attention. Can I respond? Any other uh, directors have any comments? Uh, yes. Okay. I beg to differ. We have done a lot and other boards have spent a lot of money and not done anything. And we're gonna be replacing redwood tanks. We're gonna be putting in new pipes. We're gonna be fixing the infrastructure in a big way where the whole US is so far behind in infrastructure. And we keep moving ahead. We have a staff that works hard and we need to provide them with the money to get work done. And I think our response to the ratepayers is just look at what we're doing. New pipes, new tanks. We've got so many redwood tanks that still need to be replaced and we can't do them all but we can do them in bits and pieces. I think we have a lot to be proud of as a board and 
that we have worked hard and done what needs to be done here. It's not like we're throwing money down the toilet. Thank you, Lois. Anybody else with uh, any other director with a comment they would like to make? Lou, you are recognized. Thank you, Steve. I think that, that uh, Bob makes some very good points that we cannot ignore. And I'm hopeful that in the next fiscal year, we have some serious discussions about how we can increase significantly our revenue stream. And I think there's some, some definite ideas along those lines. In fact, I've shared some with, with Rick. Um, secondly, I think that when we're talking about the expense side, you know, I'm not advocating that we cut expenses. All I am advocating is that we, we slow the growth of expenses because, you know, if we can increase our revenue stream, you know, we need to make sure we spend that money in the right place, like infrastructure that's crumbling. Um, so it, anything we can do to, to lower the, the increase of expenses and significantly raise revenue will be uh, definitely an advantageous situation for us in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Yeah, I kind of uh, agree. Bob makes a number of good points. And, uh, and I also agree, Lou, that uh, the, the next 12 months should be spent on really focusing on the next budget. And also the only key to success here is really going to be uh, new revenue opportunities, finding them and cultivating them. And I think that's where I'm going to put my uh, efforts and faith going forward. Although I do agree slowing the curb of increasing expenses is critical. And uh, we'll look at that as they come up. Any any other uh, comments from any of our directors? That being said, Lois, I believe you were making a motion to. I, I made a, a motion to approve resolution number 21, 1920, adoption of the fiscal year budget for 2021. Perfect. And I'll be glad to second that, Lois. We need public comment too yet. We already had public come. Oh, didn't we? No, we went up to the public. Yeah, we went to the public. We could go again if you want, but if well, someone I'm else sorry, is... I didn't realize that. I... No, keep a, keep your monkey wrenches in your pocket, Rick. <laughs> we'll do that, sir. Do a thing up for me. Uh, Holly, would you like to record the vote? President Swan? Yes. Direct Moran? Yes. Director Fulce? No. Director Henry? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Holly. Okay, Rick, moving right along. Okay, we have uh, uh, item uh, 5C. Uh, this will be a discussion of possible action related to the award of contract for the construction of the 2020 pipeline replacement projects. We have the uh, district engineer that will present this, re uh, this report. Sharon? This will be 5C. Yep, I had it up on my computer and then it disappeared. Hold on one second while I get it. Page 69. 69. Okay, here we go. On April 24th, 2020, the San Lorenzo Valley Water District opened bids for the construction of the 2020 pipeline replacement project. The following firms submitted bids, Anderson Pacific Construction, Pacific Underground Construction, Monterey Peninsula Engineering, West Valley Construction, and Granite Construction. This project involves the replacement of approximately 3,300 feet of water line and other appurtenances on Hillside Drive and California Avenue. 
Anderson Pacific is currently under contract with the district for the construction of the Lompico Tanks Replacement Project. Work on, on that project is proceeding smoothly. District staff and the district attorney have reviewed the bid documents and, and have found them to be in order. Staff recommends award of this contract to the low bidder, Anderson Pacific Construction. Ready to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Darren. I'd really like to congratulate whoever's responsible for getting more than one bid. It's nice to see. Uh, any questions or comments from any of the directors? Bob? Yeah, Darren, thanks for, yeah, definitely getting more than one bid because um, we're seeing a, a nice spread between there. So that's good. Um, is Where's Anderson Pacific located? Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. So they're kind of local. <laughs> Sorry. That's good. Um, anybody on their staff, do we know, uh, live up here in the valley? Is any of this money going to be coming back into the valley? I'm not aware of their staff situation or where they live. Okay. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Uh, Rick? Yes. Uh, so before I vote on this, I'd like to make a little disclaimer here. I live on California Drive. Uh, this project was started before I became a board member, and this project affects my whole neighborhood, not just me. So I'm glad to see it happen. All right. Uh, Darren, uh, I've seen you work on this uh, to get competitive bids, and we see the benefit of that process. Uh, thank you. We now have choices. A difference of three hundred thousand dollars. Thank you for your hard work. I think you referred to it as bird dogging one time. You're a successful bird dogger in this case. So, uh, in reading it over the notes, uh, Anderson is doing the Lompico project, right? And right. everything satisfactory there. You like working with yeah. these guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. They're fabulous. Um. I love seeing the upgrade in the fire hydrants that's happening in uh, the neighborhood that I live in. Um, what is AC paving? Asphalt concrete. Asphalt concrete. So how much of the road will be uh, dug up and how much will be paved? Just the part that the trench or you explain to me? Yeah, the part of the, the trench, the trench okay. width, which is usually be three to four feet wide. A big long patch all the way down California Drive. And then there will be a slurry applied. It's a yep. it's a county requirement. So this, okay. the whole road will be slurried. The whole road will be slurried. Well, I understand. Uh, yeah. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, and one other thing, I would love to see an example of the six-inch ductile iron waterwork pipe. I'd love to see an example of that. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and uh, otherwise, thank you very much for your hard work on this. That's my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Director Ferris. Thank you, Steve. Um, this could be either for Darren or for uh, Rick Rogers. Uh, and I don't know whether I'm talking about what was in an attachment to the agenda or whether I was looking someplace else, but at some point there was some details about where the, the pipelines are going to be laid and the diameters of those pipes. And in two of the smaller or the shorter runs in smaller neighborhoods, um, it was talking about replacing piping with six inch, duct, um, du I think ductile iron, as opposed to eight inch. I thought we we're gonna use a, a minimum of eight inch for all of the the, um, the five pipeline projects, no? You wanna answer that, Darren? Well, I can tell you what's on the plans. The plans are six inch ductile iron on California Drive and eight inch HDPE on Hillside Drive. Uh, and some of the reason behind that HDPE inner diameter is a lot smaller than ductile. Uh, it's because of the, of the construction of the pipe. The six inch pipe that we're doing, it's in its loop system. You'll get your rated fire flow and water supply through the six inch. You know, each one is looked at and, and engineered to make sure we get adequate flows. So in a loop system, you can go with a smaller diameter, the six, six inch versus the, the eight inch? Well, when you use HDPE, the ID, the inside diameter, 
is a lot smaller than ductile just because of the way it's constructed. So you almost wind up with like a, a five inch ID with the six inch uh, HDPE. So you go larger and you'll get them a, a little better than a six inch ID on eight inch pipe because it's the ID. Each pipe is constructed and manufactured differently. Yeah. Actually, I wasn't talking about uh, the difference in pipe material, HDPE versus ductile iron. I was more thinking about, I thought somewhere in my memory banks, we had had a discussion maybe way back when that said that for the, the main distribution system, the five pipeline projects, we were gonna uh, use a minimum uh, ID of eight inches, I thought. Now, maybe I was wrong, but you know, our, our, I, I guess the question is, are we sure we're gonna get the, the pressure uh, benefit of, of the six inch? Yes, Okay. We are sure. Then that's, that's all I wanted to know, thank you. Thank you, Lou. Any other uh, questions or comments from the board? Me? <laughs> okay. I got my hand up. Go right ahead, Lois. Okay. Um, Rodney Cahill, who's, it's Misty Miller, or I'm probably not saying that right. Um, he came to the christening of the probation tank. Um, he's done work all in this valley. And they're right downtown Santa Cruz. And they actually did work for Lake Boulevard Road Association. They've just, they've done really good work and I totally trust them. And he even remembered who I was. Um, and I, I was kind of surprised by that. That isn't why I'm rec recommending him or anything, but I I, uh, I think they're a good firm, they're local, and we need to use them a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. Uh, not seeing anybody else, we'll go to the uh, public. Any public comment on the uh, project? Okay, not seeing any. Back to the board. Uh, anybody want to make a motion? If I if I could just clarify one thing that that we talked about just briefly, um, Anderson Pacific is from Santa Clara, and MM, uh, MME uh, Engineering, which is the next item, they're from Santa Cruz. Right. Okay. By looking at the wrong place. Uh, but they're the same people. Might be lost, but uh, thanks for that clarification, there. So, uh, in in accordance with the staff recommendations, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we uh, authorize the district manager to sign a contract with Anderson Pacific Contractors in the amount of one point two uh, million and change for the construction of the twenty twenty pipeline replacement project. I will second that motion. Thank you very much. Holly, would you like to take uh, record the vote? Director Swan? Yes. Excuse me, that was President Swan. Director Moran? You're muted, Director Moran. Excuse me, Holly. Yes. You got Director that Fulls? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Holly. Rick, back to you. Okay, item 5D. Uh, this is the discussion of possible action related to the award of a construction management contract for the 2020 pipeline replacement project that the board just adopted. Uh, and the uh, district engineer will give that report there. Yes, thank you. On April 22nd, 2020, the San Lorenzo Valley Water District opened proposals for construction management services for the 2020 pipeline replacement project. The following firms submitted bids, MME Civil and Structural Engineering and Eagle Project Management LLC. The proposals were evaluated using the criteria set forth in the RFP. Both proposals were high quality and well presented 
major difference was the estimated number of hours necessary to oversee the project. Attached is a copy of the proposal from MME for your review. MME successfully performed construction management on the probation tank project, which was completed earlier this year. And MME is currently under contract with the district for the construction management of the Lompico tanks replacement project. Work on that project is proceeding smoothly. Based on the selection criteria set forth in the proposal and the successful working relationship the district has with MME, staff recommends award of the construction management contract for the 2020 pipeline replacement project to MME civil and structural engineering. And I'll answer, uh, attempt to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Darren. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? I already said my comments previously about MM. Right, you like the Sorry. downtown guys. Thank you, Lois. Uh, Rick Moran, you are recognized. Uh, thank you. Um, so in the previous discussion, yes, we have a, a good working relationship with MME. Um, and uh, it's amazing that the two bids would be that different, but it's great to see that we got two bids. Thank you again for being a bird dog on that, Darren. Um, so one of the things that uh, I, I'm trying to understand is the prevailing wages. And you know, there's a long list of the, the staff's uh, wages, uh, the engineers and things like that. So are the field, as they describe the field work or the field technician, are those the people that are actually digging in the trench? Who are the, you know, the, the hardcore laborers, physical laborers? What so, title do they have? So what you see in the proposal are the titles for MME staff. Yeah. They will not be digging in the trench. They will not be laying pipe. They will not be doing any of that. They will mostly be doing construction management observation and um, book, book work, bookkeeping, that sort of stuff. Right. Um, construction management. Uh, none of the contractors, classifications, et cetera, that's associated with prevailing wage are included in the proposal that are before you. Okay. So do you know how much the prevailing wage is for those workers who will be doing that physical digging and um, standing on the roadside and all that kind of work that goes along with this project? It varies based on the classification, but no, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Director Fultz. Yeah, I think it's really exciting to see one as half of the other. Um, and just wanted to make a quick suggestion, I, I think, Rick, uh, on this. I think it might be helpful for us to get a periodic report, maybe quarterly or so, of how we're doing against the original estimates on each one of these projects as we pass these bids and get the expenses locked in. Um, and that way we can see how we're doing against uh, spending down that 14.5 million. Ultimately, if there's a way for us to, you know, have something left over in that, that would be a, a, a significantly good thing. And at some point in the future here, fairly shortly, as we get these things under bid, we're gonna wanna start thinking about that. If, if such a happy event occurs. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Director Ferris, you are recognized. Thank you, Steve. I would like to commend Darren for all the hard work he has put into the last two agenda items. I would like to remind everybody that it was just a little over six months ago that we appropriated this money to, to start the real significant progress of, of true um, um, infrastructure uh, improvements and upgrades. And we were kind of worried at the time that we might not hit the window for construction this year of the summer. And because of Darren's hard work and approvals tonight, we will definitely hit that window. And I think a lot of that, uh, the thanks for that has got to go to Darren. So. Uh, I would like to just thank you, Darren, for all your hard work. Okay. Here, here. Great call out, Lou. Thank you, Darren. Any other uh, comments by any 
dilettante directors? No? Okay, we'll go to public President, comment. President Swan, if I could make a brief um, public service announcement, if you will, um, for sure. the attendees, please do not use the chat function. Um, I've asked the panelists not to monitor the chat function because uh, for Brown Act reasons. So we don't have private messages going back and forth. So any messages on the chat, um, they are public records, but the board isn't likely to see them. So if you have comments, please try to make them during the public comment period uh, orally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gina. So we are at that uh, critical point in this discussion for public comment. Who in the public has a comment they would like to share or a question they would like to ask re relative to this project? Seeing none, we'll go back to the panelists and see if somebody wants to make a motion on this. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we authorize a district manager to enter into a contract with MME Civil and Structural Engineering for the 2020 Pipeline Replacement Project Construction Management in the amount of $78,272. President Swan. Uh, but, but need a second. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to second that. Uh, Rick, are your, is your hand up for a reason? I'll, I'll second that, yes. Okay, Thank Rick you. will second that. Okay, put your hand down. Thanks. <laughs> no, your blue hand. Put your blue hand down. Okay, Holly, go ahead and record the vote. I apologize. President Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Director Ferris. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Holly. Uh, Rick, uh, back to you. No, sorry. Uh, President uh, Swan, I have one other question. Is, uh, do we know when approximately uh, backhoes will hit the ground here? Um, there's a lot of people in my neighborhood who are anticipating this project. Can somebody go dig a hole in front of Moran's house? We'll, we'll no, that, would be, that would be favoritism, can't do that. We'll get a schedule out very shortly, uh, Rick, uh, to and, and get a letter out to your neighborhood describing the construction activities and with a schedule. We'll get that out shortly before construction okay. begins. Just dig a hole and don't fill it for about six months. <laughs> we'll teach them. Okay, Rick, back to you. On hey, to, uh, uh, item 6A is uh, ordering an election, uh, requesting the County of Santa Cruz elections to conduct the election and requesting consolidation of such election. Recommended that the Board of Directors review the, the memo and adopt the resolution number 2319-20, ordering an election, requesting Santa Cruz County elections to conduct the election and requesting consolidation of such uh, elections for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, as well as the notice to county clerk of elected um, officers to be filled. Uh, the item uh, of two San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board of Directors will be uh, up for election on November 6, 2018, according to the Santa Cruz County Election Department records. Uh, the following directors are up for election on November 3rd, 2020. Four year terms would be Director Ferris and uh, Director Moran. Prior to the election, state law requires special districts to file a notice of elections with the county clerk, verifying which offices are up for election, as well as other pertinent information. There's an attachment in your uh, agenda. Uh, historically, your board has uh, elected uh, the following options. Uh, the first one would be the candidate statements of qualification shall be limited to 200 words. Optionally, the board could elect to limit candidate statements of qualifications to 400 words which doubles uh, the cost. Uh, the second is candidates are responsible for paying the cost of publishing the candidate statement of qualifications in the voter's information pamphlet at the time of filing his or her statement. Optionally, the district could elect to pay the cost of publishing the candidate statements of, qualifica of qualifications. It's recommended that the board of directors uh, review and adopt the resolution ordering the election, requesting Santa Cruz County elections to conduct the election and requesting consolidation of such elections uh, for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, Rick. Any uh, questions or comments from the board?
Bob? Uh, Rick, uh, is are we recommending that the district is going to pay for it, or are you saying we could choose to do that? We can choose to do that. We are not recommending that we do that. Okay, great. Thank you. We have not done that in the past. Yeah, I didn't think we uh, had. Yes, right. thank you. Okay, uh, Director Moran. Uh, yes. Uh, what is the cost of publishing the candidate statement of qualification in the voters information pamphlet? Does anybody know what that cost is? Uh, Holly might. Uh, if not, it's you can get it off of the website or we can get it off the county website for you. Okay. Well, in 2018, I think it was about $500 to have your... Yeah, it's, it's, a, few hundred, it's a few hundred dollars. Right, something like that. And then if there is an election, they refund it to you if no one, if you run opposed. Right, uh, right. On that. Just but, get appointed in lieu, it's refunded. Right. There is uh, there is quite a bit uh, on the Santa Cruz County uh, election website um, for uh, candidates. So it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. It's, uh, it's great information on there, Rick. I'm pretty sure it's based on the number of voters and uh, that fee might have gone up a little bit since I think we increased the voter registration by seven or 800 people in the last election. That, that is correct. And the cost of the election is by the amount of registered voters. Yep. And then one more question. Uh, why the range from 26,000 to 43,000? Mute. Oh, the fiscal impact. You're I, I can answer that. Yes. Yeah. It's it's either a dollar fifty per person per voter or two fifty per voter in that range. They don't know exactly what it's going to cost. All right. So that's why there's that I range. Forty three. Okay. Thank you, Holly. Okay. Uh, Lou, you're up. I have a point of order question for Gina. Gina, given the fact that this agenda item pertains to Rick and I, would we be allowed to even vote on this agenda item? Or is there a conflict of interest? Well, that's a good question. Uh, there is a potential issue to the extent that um, the directors are being asked whether to pay for the cost of the publishing the candidate statements. Um, I haven't analyzed that question closely, but if it could not be made part of any motion, uh, we could address the issue that way, I believe. Uh, I think it's a good question, Lou. If we don't pay for it, I don't think it's an issue for you. Yeah, I no. agree. As long as that's the board doesn't vote to pay the candidate statements that it becomes a non-issue. Right. Okay. And then at that point, if, if we did agree, if we did decide to pay for it, then it would have to be a three to two, it would have to be a three Oh vote, right. Yeah. To, to pass it. So if you guys didn't vote. Well, and I, I would need to investigate, um, to make sure that simply not voting on it was adequate. There might be more steps that need to be taken. Well, that's true. They might have to do the, the uh, excuse and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, and explain yeah. the yeah. conflict, et cetera. Yeah, uh, under our new policy that we instituted to provide more context around conflict of interest. Any other uh, comments or questions from any board members? Well, Lou and Rick Moran, need to be nice to me because the election's <laughs> on my birthday and I'm going to have influence. <laughs> I'm nice to you every day, Lewis, Lois. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> All righty, let's uh, open it up for any public comment. Does the public have any questions or comments about this item? No. Oh. to the uh, panelists then. Okay, do we have anybody that wants to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 23-19-20, resolution ordering an election, requesting county elections to conduct the election 
and requesting consolidation of the election. Second. Okay. President Swan. Yes. Director Moran. Yes. Director Fulce. Yes. Director Henry. Yes. Director Ferris. Abstain. Motion passes. Okay, great. Back to you, Rick. Okay, uh, item 6B is discussion of possible action related to the award of a software contract to ISRI. Uh, the uh, district engineer will present this uh, report to the board. In 2017, the district chose ESRI ArcGIS software for the implementation of the district's new GIS system. The original three-year contract was in the amount of $30,000. ArcGIS <laughs> software provides the ability to perform spatial analysis, hydraulic modeling and mapping, et cetera. Our staff uses ArcGIS on numerous project, projects ranging from fire management to watershed protection. District staff has been pleased with the ArcGIS software and the tech support provided by Esri. Based on the limited options for this type of software and staff's familiarity with the ArcGIS software, staff recommends award of a three-year software contract to Ezra. And I'll try to answer any questions you have about this ArcGIS software. Thank you, Darren. Do we have any questions uh, for Darren about this contract? I have none. Go ahead, Bob. Just a quick one, Darren, you're killing me here. I'm a map info guy. I got to vote for Esri. Come on. <laughs> What's that? I'm a map info guy. Now I got your, now you're making me vote for Esri. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, just kidding. Esri's, Esri's a great uh, product and I'm glad you guys are making great use of it. It should help. Um, it should also help uh, ultimately get um, information to the board as well in, a, in an easy to understand form. Thank you, Bob. Any other uh, comments or questions from any other board member? If not, we'll go to the public and see if the public. Uh, looks like we're losing somebody. Uh, anybody uh, in the public world there have any questions or comments regarding this contract extension? Seeing none, we'll come back to the. Uh, Board here and see, does anybody want to make a motion? Hey, I'll make a motion. Go right ahead. Uh, I make a motion that the board of directors authorize the district manager to sign a three-year contract extension with ISRI in the amount of $30,000. Lou, your hand is up. Are you trying to second this? Lou? I will second that motion. Thank you, Lou. Holly, would you like to record the vote? President Swan. Yes. Director Moran. Yes. Director Fulce. Yes. Painfully. Director Henry. Yes. Director Ferris. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Holly. Back to you, Rick. We have, oh, we have the consent agenda. Right. You have uh, the consent agenda in front of you with the minutes from the board of uh, directors meeting of April 16th and the minutes from the special board of directors meeting of uh, May 6th. Does any uh, director request to have any minutes pulled? Oh, I can't see hands. I don't see any hands anyway. Okay, moving right along. District reports, department status reports. Uh, engineering? Well, actually, yeah, engineering. Any status report you'd like to comment on? Let's get digging. 
Okay. Not being any. Uh, environmental, any comments? Bob? I did have one for, uh, for Carly. Uh, Carly, with respect to the water conservation uh, emphasis around sustainable water supply planning and the um, Santa Cruz County, uh, what is it here? Uh, water Conservation Coalition. Have we established or should we establish goals um, for water conservation that is uh, gallons per day per person indoor use? Right, so with that urban water management plan, um, which was a big cost in the environmental budget, mm -hmm. that's coming up due, um, that will set new goals for the districts. So what are, what are our current goals for, the, for our water conservation? Right, well, we're meeting as far as the day per capita per person, we are meeting those goals. Um, right now, we're kind of just focusing on outreach. Um, you know, we, we kind of backed off on the conservation the last year here. Is the, well, maybe I can put it a different way. If we're mm -hmm. currently sitting at somewhere around 42 to 43 gallons per day per use, per cust per person, indoor use, <laughs> say that fast, mm -hmm. um, where do we think that would go? And is, is what you're really talking about here more a maintenance of that uh, conservation rather than driving people down to like 30 gallons or 35 gallons or something like that? Well, I, 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 it's nebulous goals sort of make me a little uncomfortable because it makes mm -hmm. people don't know what it is they need to be doing. And, right. um, and so by having a specific goal, we can help people understand what they need to be doing. Yeah, I would say right now, you know, it is just kind of the maintenance and making sure, you know, we're tracking what we are using. Um, I can't imagine even with the updated urban water management plan that will be, you know, going much lower than what we have right now stated that we'll meet. Um, and I can't imagine with us being so under the state that it's going to affect us either way. Right. Okay. Well, that's good to hear because when the rest of the state gets down to 50 and they actually mean it, then I'll, I'll be a little worried that maybe <laughs> we need to do a little better. But right now, I think we're something like 25% below or 30% below the state average. I mean, it's, right. yeah, it's okay. Great. Thanks, Carly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bob. Lou, your hand is up. Early, I have a suggestion, and it's, it's strictly just that uh, looking at the long list of items that you're currently trying to juggle and, and knowing that you're a department of one, would it be helpful at all to, to put some sort of a priority scheme attached to each of those items you're doing so that, A, we would know what you're working on currently, and B, it would give you some sense of help if you have a conflict, two people asking you for something at the same time, you know, you've already prioritized it, say, with your boss so that you know what you work on first and then second, et cetera. Would that be helpful? I think that would be helpful. Um, in a past environmental committee meeting, we actually started to prioritize some of those projects. So I think I have a pretty good idea of what, you know, the district wants to achieve um, and, you know, from direction of the environmental committee and Rick. Um, Right now, I'm, I, you know, I feel like we have a pretty good balance. Everything's kind of moving separately, but it's all being able to be taken care of. So I'm not feeling overwhelmed yet, at least. Well, w when you do, it might mm -hmm. be helpful, at least for us to know, you know, what your priorities are. So if we want to change them, we would have, obviously have to go to Rick and not to you. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just, I think it would, because, they, you know, Murphy's Law will eventually catch up with you. And it might be just helpful to try and address that now as opposed to later. Well, and we'll we'll address that too once we get back to committee, the environmental committee meeting with the chair Moran and yourself with with the group, uh, and look at that and make sure that the priorities are achievable and what we're working on. You know, and we've kind of got off track here with COVID nineteen and canceling the committee meetings. But we we can discuss. She uh, one of the agenda items for this upcoming uh, committee meeting, environmental, is to is an update of where we're at, and that would be a great time to discuss priorities and, and go down those line items. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lou. Uh, Rick. Yeah, uh, in regard, Lou, uh, and everybody, uh, there's been some committee. Uh, 
committee members that have uh, wanted the environmental committee meetings to happen. And because of that, uh, we're going to, uh, we have scheduled uh, a Zoom meeting to happen on the 28th, next Thursday at 9.45. And uh, three items that are on the tentative agenda are the integrated pest management plan, fire management, and as Rick mentioned, an update on environmental projects. So uh, hopefully that uh, gives some context to your question, Lou. Thank you for doing that, Rick. Thank you. If, if I could ask one quick question on these upcoming committee meetings that are Zoom to, to council. Uh, there's still the same issue that board members that aren't on the committee should not be listening in on those meetings or should identify if they are. Gina, do you have any, any thoughts about the Zoom meetings coming up? I, I think essentially the same rules apply where in board members who are not committee members are discouraged from attending, um, but it's not an absolute prohibition. If somebody chooses, if a board member chooses to participate that way, it's just critical that they not um, comment or communicate in any way with the committee members. Okay. So you have to be completely passive. And, you know, ideally it would be just listen in with, um, with some kind of a, you know, don't even put the video on, just. And mute their microphone. Just right. just so. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have any status reports from finance or in business from anybody? How about legal? I don't have any comments uh, on the report, but I'm happy to answer questions. Okay. Well, it looks like one came up. Director Fultz, what a surprise. Real quick, are we done with the swim tank property acquisition? Well, that- That was in contract, right? It's, it's under contract. Uh, it won't be, the deal won't close until after um, title review and CEQA, uh, are complete. CEQA process is successfully completed. Okay, great, thanks. And anything from operations? James, it's your opportunity to put that uh, timer down and show us your face. I'll stay here, but I'm here for any questions. Okay, anybody have any questions for James? Director Fultz. Two quick ones. Uh, James, we're, Coming into uh, PSPS season, it was a dry year. Um, what is the target date for installing all the generators? As of now, I have two installed and we are currently working on the third and we plan to have them all in by the end of fiscal year. So by the end of June? Yes. All right, hopefully we won't have a, one of those outages. And, and then on the maintenance issue, just a quick question. Full service line replacement, that means from the main pipe to the meter, is that correct? Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Regarding the status reports, do we go to the public? Do you think you have any comments about anything that they've heard? We can. Public, do you have any questions or comments regarding the status reports that were just reviewed or not reviewed? Seeing none, okay, we're back to uh, committee reports. Future committee agenda items, committee meeting notes. Right. We notes. haven't had any committee uh, meetings uh, since the last board meeting due to uh, COVID uh, coronavirus. So we are starting up committees for June with the first one starting here uh, at the end of May on the environmental. And we're back to uh, two, two board meetings a month or we're back to our regular schedule on board meetings. However, they most likely will continue to be done by Zoom. We are not back in the building yet. Is that sort of for the foreseeable future, Rick, do you think? Uh, for a, a while, we've got a couple issues, you know, not to get deep into it. One, you know, the county hasn't 
and the and the state hasn't resumed public meetings. The second is that we have staff. Staff has concerns, and you know, we have small meeting room, and you know to get social distancing, even if it's allowed, is going to be very difficult. So we may look at as time goes on, maybe look at the uh, Felton uh, Library. Well, the library or uh, the Felton Community Hall, something like that. Um, but probably for the next uh, few meetings, we'll probably still be, be Zoom. Um, some of the board has expressed that they're not, you know, the, to, to get in close proximity, they're not quite comfortable yet. And we're still, you know, staff is still feeling that way too. Yeah, I understand. We, so we're, 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 we're going slow, but monitoring it daily what the state and county is allowing. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rick. The, it's, uh, we have a, the, there was a meeting with the Santa Margarita. Yeah, I have. A, Would you like to give us an update and tell us what kind of snacks they provided? <laughs> Unfortunately, no snacks because we're home doing meetings. Oh. Um, but at the very end of your agenda, it has a summary of what's gone on with Santa Margarita. The other um, thing that is happening, I, I just this past week um, attended an agenda meeting for Santa Margarita, and everything's going to get streamlined, hopefully, uh, because the last meeting we had started at 5.30, didn't end until a quarter to 10. And by that time, I was totally unconscious. I sent um, an email to the facilitator and told him I have three things to say about that meeting. It was too long, it was too long, it was too long. Nobody's brain was functioning after about 8.30. And it's so hard when you've got like 26 people in the room on go to meeting and you're trying to figure out what's going on and you've been there for more than four hours. It's just impossible. So I'm hoping they're really making an effort to streamline things and and uh, we'll get things accomplished at Santa Margarita. Uh, we're gonna have a smaller roadmap. They're gonna use fewer acronyms. They're just going to do a lot of things to make things easier for everybody. Sounds like they're hiring another yeah. consultant. The streamlined consultant. Thank you, Lois, for sharing. Director's reports, anybody have any director's communication or uh, anything relative to the future board of directors meeting agenda items? Steve, I have something that both addresses future agenda items and um, an additive part to what Lois just reported on for Smigla. Please go pro. Okay. Share that with us, Lou. A um, couple things. First of all, real quickly, uh, we are currently developing our significant and unreasonable statement that will drive us when, once we start um, putting together a straw a straw man for the uh, groundwater, sustain, groundwater sustainability plan. And then we start going into the GSP. We'll probably have a, a rough draft somewhere in the September, October timeframe. So if any of the directors have any input they would like to include for the GSP or the significant and unreasonable statement, now would be a good time to share it with either Lois or myself. And the, the second point is that um, maybe what we need to do since we're getting into a critical phase of making decisions for the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency is to put on the agenda SMIGWA so that we can talk about it and report on it at each board meeting. What do you think? I think that would be great. And discuss it perhaps. 
Absolutely. Very good suggestion, Lou. I do have a question for Gina, uh, though, uh, Steve, regarding that. In terms of providing comments to Lois or Lou, uh, Gina, is that possible for us to do? It would be, it does raise some concerns. Um, I don't see a problem simply having perhaps a staff member compile comments from various directors. I wouldn't advise the directors to communicate among themselves about comments. Um, and Rick, I hate to volunteer a staff member for well, something like that, but. We, I thought, I thought we discussed this and, and that's what it came out of this. Um, kind of minute order that the Santa Maria Groundwater Agency was doing that you have in the back of the board meeting recap because we didn't want them, our board members that are on Sigma to take, to come back and get direction from the full board. I thought we said, I thought we would avoid that and just try to give updates of what was happening. Why don't we want to give direction? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. Understand. Well, that kind of came from a discussion I think we had with, with council and uh, Director Ferris and Director Henry a while back that, you know, for, for, for the, the, our directors that are on Sigma to, to vote, they wouldn't be taking direction from the full board. Is that correct? Right. That's, you know? that, that's right. Yeah. What, what we, I, now I'm recalling that discussion. What we, what I advise against is um, having the two directors who sit on the SMIGLA board coming back to the full board right. for um, to, to obtain direction in terms of how to vote on the SMIGLA board. But it would be good to have some way to create collective comments on the part of the district for purposes of the GSPs. I'm not talking about like directing Smigwa directors how to vote, but um, that it does create some problems in terms of communications and Brown Act. And one way to deal with that would be to have like a staff member um, collect and compile the comments. Right. And that's what we kind of came up with this, you know, the board meeting recap that we could bring back to the board and discuss what happened at the previous meeting and not looking for direction. Are, are you saying that the board members then would be prohibited in our role as director from providing any comments or opinions or, or what have you about the direction that the Santa Margarita uh, uh, Groundwater Agency is heading in during an open board meeting? I, I think I may be able to clarify this. I think we're actually conflating two different issues. Mm -hmm. One was, um, uh, dealing with an issue of tying the hands of the SMIGWA board members in terms of how to vote. Um, and I'd recommend against that. But we can have discussions of the full board about what's going on at SMIGWA as uh, uh, District Manager Rogers described, um, as long as it's agendized. And, and so Lou's suggestion would be able to be done then where we could agendize it, review it, comment, provide opinions, what have you, as long as we're not saying to Lois and, and Lou, you ha you must do it this way. Right, and the, the, initially I was responding to a situation where folks may be circulating written comments among themselves. Of course, that creates a brand act problem because it's being done outside of a, of a uh, regularly noticed meeting. Yes, but, of course. Right, but we can have a discussion at a meeting where comments are collected and compiled, et cetera, as long as um, the board isn't attempting to vote on how the SMIGWA board members vote. Gotcha. Thanks for that clarification. I, I could work with council on an, uh, on an agenda item for the next agenda, uh, kind of based on what Lou once uh, was talking about and a recapping of, of the meetings. Um, we can work on an item to get this on the agenda. 
Thank you, Rick. That sounds like a great idea. Does that work for you, Gina? Yes, absolutely. You too, Lou, Director Ferris. But uh, yeah, I'd just like to add one thing. One of the reasons why I suggested uh, an update at a board meeting is because then um, Gina would be there. So if we do get into, we still do start putting our toe across the line, she would be there to to, to force us to, to, to take a step back. So it, that's kind of why I suggested that. Does that make sense, Gina? Uh, it does, of course, you know, it won't be a, a privileged or confidential discussion. So, you know, we'll just have to navigate that as best we can. Right. But my idea was just to ask, to give a summary, allow questions to be asked, but no decisions to be made. Does that make sense? In other words, we're just taking input. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I get the picture, Lou. Yeah, I, Thank you. Could I say something? Sure. We need to be careful because if I vote no on something or if Lou votes no on something, um, it, we could kill it. So we need to be careful about what we're doing because something came up now, a few months ago that I didn't like, questioned, didn't ever get an answer. And I made a comment, I, and it was about the, the facilitator. Uh, I made a comment about if I voted no, it would just get rid of the whole thing. And I noticed that of that huge group, a lot of them didn't even know that. I think there's only six of us who have that kind of power, two from Scotts Valley, two from SLB, and two from the county. I could be wrong. That's so we need to be very careful about uh, what when we're talking that we know what we're talking about and how important it is. Just, just what I'm thinking. That's why we put bullets in your gun, Lois. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thought, Lois. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, as far as informational material goes, uh, we have uh, a coronavirus article from the Santa Cruz, so y'all can read it if you want to. Other than that, do we have any final parting comments from any of the uh, directors or staff? For the public? If not, I'm going to adjourn this uh, meeting.